Today in our 2017 Subaru WRX, we'll be having a look at and installing the Curt T Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with 4 pole Flat Trailer Connector, part number C56259. Now here's what our wiring looks like installed. This 4 pole Flat Wiring gives us our basic lighting functions that are required by law in order to safely tow a trailer. Our brown wire gives us our tail light and running light signal. Our yellow wire gives us our left turn signal and left brake light. And our green wire gives us our right turn signal and right brake light. We have this nice dust cover here to help protect our connector when it's not in use to keep any dirt and debris from entering the socket, causing a poor connection or a short. Now this wiring harness has a total of six amps of power output for our tail light and running light circuit. Now our turn signal and brake lights are a total of three amps per side. Now this gives us adequate power to tow a small trailer, even one that has multiple lights on it. Shouldn't give us any problems at all. So even if we have a lot of lights, we should be good to go. Another great thing about this wiring harness is, it's designed to be stored inside of our vehicle when it's not in use. So it's one less thing we have dragging below our vehicle, worrying about getting damaged or being exposed to the elements. Now when we want to tow, we just grab it, making sure that the wire is to the side of the trunk latch. It won't be damaged that way at all. Now, when you're not towing and you want to store it, you just lift up your cargo cover area here and store it in this recessed pocket. It's nice and out of the way and it won't be damaged when you're loading cargo or items into your trunk. You won't even know that you have wiring installed when it's stored. Which is my favorite thing about this wiring harness is it's completely tucked up and concealed and we don't have to worry about it becoming damaged, getting snagged in any of our cargo when we're loading and unloading it. Now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. All right, we'll begin our installation by opening our trunk. We'll take out our floor covering here. Remove our spare tire tray. We'll remove our cargo net attachment points. There's one on each side of our trim piece here. There are seven millimeter bolts. And we'll set these aside. And now in the center of our trim panel here, right below our trunk latch, there's a push pin. We'll use a trim panel tool to remove this. Okay, now we can grab our panel, lift up on it, and set it aside. We'll remove our side panels on our driver's side. Do the same on the passenger side. We'll undo our cargo net hooks here. One on each side, right behind the tail light. Okay, now we'll take our spare tire and the tools out. Okay, now we'll grab our carpet, pull it back so we have access to our tail light connector. Okay, now behind each of our tail light assemblies, we'll find an electrical connector. At the top, there's a tab. We push in on the tab, we pull back, it becomes disconnected. Now we'll take our connector here that has the brown, the red, and the yellow wire in it. We'll plug the male in into the vehicle wiring harness until it clicks into place. Pull back and make sure it's secure. The female end will plug right into the taillight assembly. Now our ground wire here, which has a ring terminal on it, we can secure to the vehicle's chassis with a self-tapping screw. But in order to avoid drilling extra holes into our vehicle, our stud here that holds our taillight assembly in place, our ring terminal fits over nicely over that. So we'll remove the eight millimeter nut. Slide the ring terminal on over the stud and resecure the nut.
That'll give us a nice solid ground point without adding any extra holes to our car. Okay, now our black wire that comes off of our control box is our power wire. We'll take our provided yellow butt connector, stick it over the wire, and crimp it into place. Now we'll take one end of our roll of black wire that comes with the kit, strip off some insulation, stick that in the other end of the butt connector, and we'll crimp that on down as well. Okay, now we will wrap our butt connector up in some electrical tape just to help better protect it. And we will do this on every butt connector from this point forward. We'll take our double-sided tape here, peel off the back on one side, apply it to the back of our module here, press down firmly, peel off the other side, and we'll stick this in a spot out of the way. We'll press firmly against the side of the car so it'll stay in place. Okay, now we'll put our carpet back in place on the side. Okay, we've gone ahead and peeled back our carpet over here on the passenger side, just like we did on the driver's side. We'll route our green wire with a connector on over to the passenger side. Unplug our tail light connector. And tee the two together. Now we'll secure a wire to this back panel here with a couple zip ties. Okay, now this rubber plug here, closest to our driver's side in the spare tire well, we're gonna drill a hole right in the middle of it. Take the other end of our black wire and poke it on through. And we'll just push it down all the way. You'll note we have left enough slack in it to follow the contours of our spare tire well. We'll take some black silicone sealant and go over where the hole was. This will help seal up any moisture or exhaust gases from getting inside the vehicle. And we'll let that dry for a few minutes. Okay, now that all of our connections are made inside the trunk, we can put all of our carpet and panels back into place. We went ahead and routed our power wire to the front of the vehicle. You can see where it comes out of our spare tire well here. We made sure we kept it high and tight against our spare tire well to keep it away from our exhaust. We want to avoid any moving parts or sources of heat when we do this. We went above our rear subframe to avoid all of our control arms, our CV axles, and anything that moves comes down here. Then we routed it underneath this black plastic panel here and underneath this one here as well. And it comes out right here. Now we're going to drop down a pull wire from our engine bay and connect it to the end of our wire and pull it into our engine compartment. Here's our pull wire. We're using a piece of airline tubing you could use a coat hanger too. You just want something that's somewhat flexible but yet rigid. So we're gonna go behind our fuel lines here next to our strut tower. And we'll just route that down. Okay, so here's our pull wire. We taped our wire to it. Now we're also, while we're down here, we're going to secure this to this bracket here for our brake line. This will keep it away from our steering shaft and keep our wire as far up away from the ground as possible. We use a zip tie to do that. Okay, now we'll pull this into our engine bay. We'll wrap it around our fuse box here. Come to the side of it. We're routing it this way to avoid the heat from our exhaust. Okay. 
but we'll secure it with a zip tie to our battery cables. Okay, we'll cut off our excess wire right here. Strip off some insulation. We'll attach a butt connector, crimp it on down. Take our fuse holder. I'd like to point out that there is no fuse in it at this point in time. We'll strip off a little bit more insulation. Stick that in the other end of the butt connector. Crimp it down. Okay, and the other end of our fuse holder. Take off the pre-stripped insulation. Take off a little bit more. Take our ring terminal and we'll crimp it on. Gain access to our positive battery terminal. Now we'll take a 12 millimeter socket and remove this nut. Place our ring terminal over that stud. Reinstall the nut. Tighten that back down. Take our fuse, place it in the fuse holder, and we'll cover up the dust cap. Now we'll see where our connector comes out right here. Make a notch so we can put our cover back on. Just a pair of side cutters. Okay, now we're using a four pole flat trailer tester to test our wiring to make sure everything's working properly. It's part number I26 on our website if you'd like to purchase one. We'd start by turning on our headlights. And as you can see, our tail light and running light function on our trailer would be working. Do our left turn signal now. That's working as well. We'll try it right. That's working too. And finally our brakes. And as you can see, our brake lights are working just fine as well. And that completes our look at and installation of the Curt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number C56259 on our 2017 Subaru WRX. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.